Hey everybody, welcome to Skills on Sunday for October 11th, 2020. I am your host, DM Galabond. Okay, today, Skills on Sunday, we're going to be talking about the Martial Adept. Now, the Martial Adept is a feat in 5th edition that is a little bit different than most feats. Most of the time, I like to say that feats in 5th edition give you an entire suite of abilities that are generally good at all levels and across most games. Martial Adept is a feat that it's not so much situational as it is a feat that really benefits from a certain style of gameplay. And if you're not playing in that style of game, you can decide whether or not you think it's really uh, worthwhile taking. All right, so we're going to go as we usually do, and we are going to look at sort of the what martial adept does look back at the history and then in this case we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, situations that may be best um, for using it all right so uh let's start by looking at the actual martial adept feat so you have martial training allows you to perform special combat maneuvers and you gain the following benefits you learn two maneuvers of your choice from among those available in the Battle Master archetype. And then it's rules about how you do the saving throw, if there is one. And you gain one superiority die, which is a d6. Uh, and it's added to any superiority dice you have from another source. Uh, so this die is used to fuel your maneuvers. Superiority die is a superiority die is expended when you use it. Regain your expended superiority dice when you finish a short or long rest. Okay, so this is the way it is written. Let's look back a little bit at older editions of D&D, see kind of where all this stuff comes from, and then we will talk a little bit about, about um, the 5th edition uses and the situations for it. All right, so combat maneuvers. They have been around uh, forever. Uh, actually, they came into the game in the original D&D rule set, but then they went away for a while and they didn't reappear again until, uh, or things like them didn't reappear again until 3rd edition. So there's combat maneuvers that certain classes are able to do. So uh, combat maneuvers, throw fire, cast spells, use magic items, attack, uh, fighting withdraw, uh, lance attack. Okay, so all of these up here, getting down to the retreat, I should say, um, all of those are available to all characters. Now, obviously, only spell casters uh, and those who can use magic items can do that. But now you have lance attacks, set spear versus charge, multiple attacks, smash, parry, disarm. Those are all specific combat maneuvers that are restricted to special classes and the uh, or or special classes that have reached a certain level of experience. So that's what those are. When they talk about what are the combat maneuvers, uh, that's where they came from. And in 3rd edition, when they came back to the game, there was a little bit different philosophy about using them. In this edition of the game, you had to build a whole set of feats in order to be able to do some of these things. So combat expertise... Uh, that was the base level feat, and it uh, allowed you to trade your attack bonus for AC, a uh, maximum of five points. So if you had a plus four attack bonus, you could say, all right, 
I'm going to trade in that 4 for AC, and now my AC is 4 better than it was before. So, and and I, that's a situational thing. You can you can choose whether you want to whether you want to trade that or not. Now, improved disarm uh, requires combat expertise, and it's plus four on disarm attacks. Uh, improved feint is feint in combat as a move action. Improved trip plus four bonus on trip attacks, and then a whirlwind attack one melee attack against each opponent within reach. So, uh, and notice that each of those has at least one, if not more, prerequisites. So, the improved disarm, improved feint, improved trip all require the um, combat expertise. The whirlwind attack requires a dex of 13, intelligence of 13, the combat expertise also requires dodge mobility, spring attack, and a base attack bonus of plus four. So <laughs> this <laughs> this was their sort of Lego block uh, philosophy in D and D third edition to you know building a suite or set of feats for your character that you really wanted to customize. All right, uh, we've looked at what the martial adept does, uh, what the base feat does in fifth edition by the rules is written. Now let's take a look at what those um, those maneuvers are uh, that are in 5th edition. So you have Commander Strike, Disarming Attack, Distracting Strike, Evasive Footwork, Fainting Attack, Goading Attack, Lunging Attack, Maneuvering Attack, and Menacing Attack, a Parry, a Precision Attack, a Pushing Attack, a Rally, a Riposte, Sweeping Attack, Trip Attack. Wow. So lots of different options here to choose from. And what it's saying with this martial adept is that you pick two of these that you are able to um, you're able to add uh, to your character and you get one superiority die to fuel them. And that superiority die refreshes on a long rest. Now, Notice that the Battlemaster, at third level, when this comes in, uh, they gain four superiority dice, which are D8s. So the feat gives you one superiority die, which is a D6. The uh, actual Battlemaster uh, subclass gives you four superiority dice, which are d8s. So 1 versus 4 and d6 versus d8s. Now, the question that was raised in the comments on the martial adept is a really good one. So what if you're already a battle master and you take this martial adept? What happens to that? Now do you get a fifth superiority die? Is it a is it still a d6? Well, somebody asked uh, Sage advice, and Mike Merles responded. Uh, you know, he said, "Does the martial light up feat give an additional D8 superiority dice to Battlemaster fighters, or is it just an extra D6?" It's one of whatever type the fighter now has. It also upgrades with the fighter's other ones. Because as a Battlemaster, when you raise to certain levels, the D6, the D8s turn into D10s, and then I think they eventually turn into D12s. I don't think they ever get to D20s, but um, they turn into uh, uh, D12. Okay, so superiority dice. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Um, improved combat superiority. At 10th level, they turn into D10s. At 18th level, they turn into D12s. Yep. So they never become. Uh, they never become D20s. Um, uh, and. So you can get an extra, an extra superiority die by taking this feat. So that can be an advantage. But now, what do I mean about this being situational? 
Well, it all comes down to this last, this last sentence here. You regain your expended superiority dice when you finish a short or long rest. So if you are a non-fighter, non-battle master, let's say you're, well, let's just say for whatever reason you're a wizard and you decided you were going to take martial adept. Uh, you get one combat maneuver per short rest. Your recharge is on a short rest. So if you take a lot of short rests, now at least you get a little bit of marginal utility out of this feat. But if you're a party where there's not a lot of short rests and not a lot of recharging, then you get one little d6. That's better than nothing. And you get one of those as opposed to four of those that you'd get with the uh, subclass. So you kind of begin to wonder how much are you going to use it. Now, there are going to be some players that will take this because of flavor. They take this because, oh, yeah, this would match my character. And you know what? If I'm the DM and the player tells me that and they, you know, I realize they understand that, then, okay, good on you. I want to see how you use this. And that might even, you know, be something that would help them earn inspiration if they have a really good reason why they would, why they would take this as a non-fighter. Um, and then there's other players that are going to look at it, kind of halfway read it, and go, oh yeah, well that gives me a chance to do what a Battlemaster does as a fighter, or as a uh, rogue, or as a wizard. No, no it doesn't. It really is kind of a very watered-down version of what a Panel Master can do. Uh, and also, according to the way this feat is written, that d6 never goes up. Now, there is nothing in this thing that says you cannot take it again. So you could potentially take this twice. You would get two d6s, and you would get four maneuvers that you could use but you still have would have to wait until a short rest for those to recharge on your superiority dice. All right, that's going to do it for the Martial Adept. I am DM Galabond. This has been Skills on Sunday. If you like everything we're doing here on the channel, please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, click that post notification bell so that you will get notified every time something new drops on the channel. And without further ado, uh, thank you very much for stopping by. Have a good night.